Hi there, my name is Eric from Team 6637 of Kearney, NATO, Michigan, the Beta Wolves. Uh, with part two of this robot series, again, we're coding a drivable robot in its simplest form using VS code and command based structure. Let's jump right in. In this video, what I'm going to be showing you is what we need to put into the oi.java file and the robotmap.java file to get a basic chassis driving. <clears throat> Let's jump right in. I'm going to go to my robot. I'm going to extend it out, go into the source file, and open the OI file right up. Again, the OI file is the operator input. So when you're talking real world examples, it's the input coming from something like a joystick. And literally all we need is a joystick here. And let's target this stick right here. There's some code already in this class. If I uncomment the joystick, then we already are most of the way of getting this done. Um, one thing I'm gonna add to this, and you'll notice some other buttons in here and some other examples. It's uh, really good to read through these examples, but um, this is mostly done. One thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna put public up front, and that'll allow us to use this variable stick in other files. And to talk a little bit more deeply about what this is doing right here, it would really help if you had an understanding of classes and how they worked in Java. And if you don't know uh, much about Java or classes, I highly recommend you do a little training on that if you want to dig deeper into this. Now let me actually show you some resources here, and I'll put the link in the bottom of the video. Um, but this is betawolves.org slash resources. This is our website. Um, and down here, under general resources, you'll see this Java video tutorial. Um, personally, I haven't gone through it, but I heard it's really good. Um, so I highly recommend giving it a shot. Uh, it's a video tutorial on YouTube of a fellow showing how to use Eclipse um, and Java in that, um, in that environment. So I highly recommend that. And then also on this page, you'll see uh, our code repository uh, for Team 6637. And more specifically, what I'm teaching right now, this code, a drivable robot project, I have a Google Doc with all my notes, which I'll be referencing and the actual end robot code. I don't think you should jump to the end robot code yet. Uh, if you're struggling, you might want to reference it, uh, but it's something that you can um, check out when we're done, come back to later, and all that fun stuff. So I'm actually gonna click on this Google Doc lesson because I should be following this. <laughs> um, you'll see if, if you're a mentor and you want to teach this, this is a handy file because it'll tell you in order of what files I'm going to, what I'm discussing, and what we should do. So specifically the OI file, um, this is what I'm discussing and this is what I'm, uh, what I'm doing in here. So it's super handy for teaching this, but I digress. Let's go back into the code. Um, this is the class, it's called joystick. And to get a class in here, um, this joystick class, you can see it's not imported yet. Uh, and there's a little squiggly line under here, and if I hover over, it's gonna say it cannot be resolved to a type. And I can right click on this and do something called organize imports. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna import a WPI libj um, library, and it's gonna pull in this class joystick. So we don't have to program everything that has to do with a joystick. We just have to pull it in and use it, which, which is super helpful. Um, so we're, we're casting this variable as a joystick so it knows what it is. We're naming it anything we want. In this case, let's just call it stick. Um, and then we're stick equals a new instantiation of this class called joystick. So we can instantiate any number of variables to equal the, a joystick. We're just doing it once and we're calling it stick. Um, it also wants a port. And I'll tell you right now, it's port zero. So that's all we need to do in here. We're gonna be coming back in a second and I'm gonna show you how to dig in and get this variable um, in other files. So when we need to use this stick, we can access it. Um, but for now, that's all we need to know. So let's jump over to our robot map file. And again, this file is used to store all of our constants, things that don't change. We wanna put them all in one file so that if we need to change something, like if a port number changes, we can go to one file and change it and not dig through all our code and have a frustrating afternoon doing that. Um, specifically to get a robot driving in its simplest form, we need some motors, right? So um, motors are attached to motor controllers, motor controllers are attached to the Robo Rio. Uh, there's a few ways you might attach a Robo 
a, a motor controller to the robo reel it might be a pwm cable um, you might have other things connected to your do ports or your digital input output um, you might have uh, something on a CAN bus. For instance, we are going to be using CAN bus in this tutorial because we have Talon SRXs connected to the CAN bus. And then you might have like USB um, ports that things are connected to. And you could have other things like, um, let's see, other drivetrain constants. Okay, so when we're creating um, variables inside of this robot map, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make them public so they can be accessed outside of this. Okay. And then we're going to, and I'm it's cheating from up here because it says static int, right? I'm still kind of a Java noob. Um, I should have looked at what static meant and I'll probably do that for the next uh, video. <laughs> but int means that this variable that we're writing is going to be an integer, which is a whole number. Um, so if we had a, ro uh, a motor controller plugged into our PWM port on the RoboRio and port one, we would say public static int, because it's an integer, we're, we're saving the port name, and let's just say left motor port equals one. This is an example. If you have your spark plugged into a PWM in port one, and it's your left motor, um, you're gonna keep track of this here. That's not how we do it on our robot. Let me show you, we're down in the CAN bus. So I'm gonna write public static int um, left master port. And I'll describe what master and slave is later on. But left master port equals one on the CAN bus. Our left slave port equals two. Our um, right master port is equal to three. And then our, let me get this out here, right slave port is equal to four. Um, notice how I'm naming this. Our naming convention on our team is to use uh, camel caps. Um, I could have done it like this. I could have done an underscore master underscore port. Um, notice there's no spaces. Um, but but I like to follow the convention of code. So if this was PHP, I'd be using underscores. If this is JavaScript, camel caps. But we're using Java, Java, and it is also camel caps. Um, if this was the name of a class, I would capitalize the first letter, but it's not. It's just a variable. Some people with constants like to put a K out front, so they would have named it K left master port. And I'm considering adopting that naming convention, but as of right now, let's keep it simple. So in its simplest form, we have four motor controllers, and we're just keeping track of what port they're plugged into so that later in our drive subsystem, when we need to say, hey, what port was that motor controller plugged into, we can grab this. And I'm going to show you how to grab it right now. It's with something called dot syntax. Okay. I'll make one more variable here called public static int. And I'm going to call this joystick port. Because if you recall, and I'm going to, I'm going to make that equal zero. If you recall in the OI file, we put a zero in right here. But what if that changes? You know, what if, you know, that's a constant. That's not going to change, but if if we had multiple joysticks and we start having to um, keep track of this number, because it could change, um, we want to do that in the robot map. So instead of putting the value in here as zero, I'm putting the value here as zero and assigning it to a variable. And then I'm going to access it. Note that this file is called robot map. So in the OI file, to access that variable, I'm going to say robot map, and then I'm going to dig down into it by hitting the, the period or the dot. And then look at that. Joystick port, left master port. These are all the variables we just created. It's so simple. I'm going to assign it to joystick port. And instead of having a zero there, now we have robot map dot joystick port. Save that. And as you know, joystick port equals zero. Uh, so that's how we use our OI file to assign a joystick. And that is how we set ports and constants inside the robot map. 
And then that's how we use those variables actually in our robot project. The last thing I'm going to show you is some example constants you might want to have. So let's say public static int and notice I like to put my cursor there and hit the tab key so that everything is indented. It makes it nice and neat. Um, some programmers even like to put a lot more white space uh, in here just to separate things. Um, it, it's all in how you want to read your code. Uh, I, I really recommend whatever you do, have it a standard across your entire team so everybody's using the same standard so that when Joe comes in here, he says, oh, Mary didn't do what I like. And then when Mary comes in, she doesn't say, oh, Joe didn't do what I like. All right. So our public static int, we could keep track of wheel diameter equals six for six inches. So let's say our wheels are six inches wide. Um, and then anywhere we need to know the diameter of our wheel, we'd say robot map dot wheel diameter. If the next year our wheel diameter changes, we don't have to search through the code for the different uh, places where that is. We just change it in this one file, which is super great. But these extra spaces are really bothering me. I'm going to get rid of them. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be going over creating a subsystem and talking about what that means a little bit more. And then we're going to pull it into the, uh, the robot file, which is the hub of the robot. Thank you so much.